Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, the third evolution of the Evo, a new custom knife by BGM, and we take a look at my 12 best looking folders. You know me. Uh, I'll tell you right up front, I'm the most shallow knife reviewer on YouTube, and looks really matter to me when it comes to knives. But first, my first opportunity to show off a knife here. And uh, well, as you know, I don't just carry one knife pretty much ever. I carry a couple. Today, it's only two. Uh, but uh, these are these are some usual suspects from recent days, and I just can't get enough of either of them. The first one comes to us from Russia with love. This is the Cristal brand uh, of knives, and this is the Aurora. It's designed by Braganets. I, I always get his uh, I always get his name right wrong, but it is Ivan Braganets, and he is a custom knife maker from um, Russia and makes some really really unique looking knives. And this one right here is. No exception. Uh, I was really drawn to the giant fuller on this blade. This, of course, is the 800-pound gorilla in the room. You look at this knife, and when it's closed, you're like, I'm pretty sure that's a Russian knife. It just has those sort of Russian lines that we've come to know from, from various Russian knife brands. And look at that beautiful milling and really interesting handle shape. But then when you open it, it's that blade that really drew me in. That That is an audacious um, fuller there. And it exists on both sides of the blade. And it must really lighten the blade quite a bit. I mean, when you look inside the titanium handle here, you can see really heavy uh, pocketing and really, you know, quite a bit of titanium has been eliminated from the inside surfaces of uh, both handles, uh, both sides of the handle, making it very light. But then also, Quite a bit of weight reduction there, with the with the huge fullers. I really, um, I, I really like the way it looks. Uh, this could be in my twelve most uh, best looking knives, but it's it's uh, kind of a new a new bird here. So um, I'll show it off here, and and you can judge for yourself. Uh, really great action on this knife. One thing, uh, a cool pivot there. One thing that I do really love is that it flies out either with the thumb stud slash uh, blade stops or with the um, uh, flipper flies out on bearings with bearing action. But then when you close it, it has a more Sebenza feel. Um, you know, you can shake it shut if, if that's your thing. But really, I love that it ah, it's very smooth and has that sort of hydraulic closing feel. Uh, this, of course, uh, I got from uh, Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast. He now is importing knives from Russia. I think this is his third model. He's got another one coming uh, from, um, uh, most of them so far have been from Cristal, though uh, he had one, uh, the Rocat, also designed by Braganets. And um, and then he's got some giant black thing coming that's uh, bigger than everything so far. It's got like a four and a half inch, four and three quarters inch blade. Uh, very cool. Check him out. Uh, you can go to his Instagram and you can order uh, through a link on his Instagram page. So today I've got the Cristal Aurora. I'm wearing shorts, you know, it's, uh, it's warm here. So I'm wearing shorts and that light thin knife is just what the doctor ordered. Next, of course, I have to have a fixed blade. I'm in a I'm in a big fixed blade all the time phase right now, and it's no wonder. It's because I've gotten a number of great fixed blades recently that are um, very capable, but also very carryable all the time. I like to carry them in the waistband on about three o'clock on my right hip. And today I've got uh, something you've been seeing a bit recently. I have my Kramer Customs Voodoo right here. Uh, this is a, uh, if you ask him, he'll tell you it's a Persian style blade with a thumb swale on top. Uh, if you ask me, it's a modified, it's a modified clip point. Uh, that thumb swale to me makes it look like a, uh, a clip point blade. You've got two, one very, very thin, beautifully hollow ground uh, 
primary cutting edge here. And then on the top, you have uh, you have a swedge. And I asked him to sharpen that swedge. He obliged, and it is a uh, it is pretty sharp. But you know, when you're coming at it from such an oblique angle like this, it's only so sharp you can get it. So it's not necessarily slicing apples sharp on that swedge. It's more tactical sharp, you know. If you're trapping with the back of the blade and then you disengage, you'll get a nice cut and a nice gouge. Uh, but it's not a utility edge the way this primary edge is. Uh, as you look at it, the knife is very thin. It's, it's thinner than, say, um, what do I have right here? It's thinner than this ZT0640 and uh, nestles right against your body beautifully. Uh, I requested this nice tan canvas micarta, and uh, this has become a huge favorite, and it is a true EDC. I carry it almost every day. Great sheath also, by the way, and that's not nothing. You need a good sheath if you're gonna carry around a good uh, fixed blade. So that's what I'm carrying today. I've got the uh, Crystal, Crystal Aurora, and the uh, Kramer Customs Voodoo. I'm curious as to whether uh, they named the Crystal Knife Company after the Crystal Champagne Company. Who knows? I don't know. I guess I could ask, but I'd have to learn Russian first. All right, next, I, I want to give a little update on a knife I've been talking about recently um, from a new uh, knife company from north of the border, uh, Newfoundland. Newfoundland. Uh, I believe that's where the Vikings first landed when they came to the New World. Uh, I could be just making that up right now, but new found land. This is a new land that we found. See what I'm see what I'm getting at there. Anyway, uh, a gentleman up there, uh, Jonathan Styles, reached out to me. He's got a company called Newfoundland Knife Company that he just started. He he has uh, other gear that he uh, has been selling, but he decided to go into knives and man, um, well, it's a great first outing. So this is the Newfoundland Knife Ranger. Comes in this high grain, tough leather sheath here. Uh, he also is, has been shipping them with Kydex sheaths that he makes custom. This Ranger knife is made by Millet Knives out in, uh, in Idaho. And if you know them at all, they have an excellent reputation for uh, being one of the very few United States OEMs out there. And um, they have a couple of knives under their own uh, shingle, but really they're an OEM knife company, and uh, uh, which means that you can hire them. If you've got the scratch, you can hire them to make your, your knives. And um, this is really well made. Uh, it's it's quite thin. The blade stock is thin. It's D2 steel. They all come Cerakoted. This one, as you can see, is Cerakoted red. and uh, But the other colors are gray and black, I believe, with this beautifully contoured handle. Okay, so you've seen this in the last couple of weeks. Why am I bringing it up again? Well, I finally, you might be able to tell the blade is a little dirty. I finally had a chance to take it out back in the back 40. 40 yards by 40 yards, that is, uh, my backyard and uh, do some divining. I live here in Virginia, and this time of year, it is like, um, it's like an alien invasion. All of the vines, we have Virginia creeper, we have grapevine, we have poison ivy. I stay away from that. We have uh, s English ivy also, and it all, man, it grows so fast. You can see how it grows over the week, and uh, I've, I was in Atlanta last week and the week before was raining. So uh, this this past weekend, I got a chance to go out back and take care of three weeks worth of growth. And you would not believe what three weeks of growth in June in Virginia means. So I had a lot of cutting of vines to do and saplings. We, we also, we've had a crazy, uh, I think they're sumac trees. It's just popping up everywhere. So great opportunity. I put the I put the um, Bark River Knives Boon 2 aside. That's been my that's been my outdoor knife of late. When I say outdoors, I just mean, you know, messing around in the backyard, uh, taking care of chores. And I grabbed this and it did wonderfully. And I have to say, a lot of it has to do with the fact that it's such a broad blade. You put it down, it's an inch and a half broad um, from spine to, to edge. And it's quite thinly ground. 
as you can see. It's a thin stock and it's thinly ground, uh, high, half height saber grind. It just made really quick work of everything. Everything I I I cut through. I guess the thickest thing I cut was probably uh, the circumference of one of these squares. I guess uh, um, about an inch, uh, half an inch around or so. Uh, but it just went through it like a laser beam, like it wasn't even there. And uh, this handle is really, really comfortable. It's, uh, but it's it's some sort of wood here, but it's finished. You can see it's shiny, but it's grippy. Even with sweaty hands, it 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 was quite grippy. Um, before I mentioned it has a lanyard hole here, I I do still stand by the fact that it'd be cool to have a lanyard hole here. Um, but I wasn't missing a lanyard with this. It was working out really nicely. I think the the bird's beak here and the ergonomics of the handle really kept it in hand. So this Newfoundland Knife Company uh, Ranger is uh, a hit. It's a winner. I, I really like it. And I kind of put it in the same on the same shelf as my SE Hunglis, or actually I don't have a Hunglis. I have the, the precursor to that, uh, the RTAC 2. Uh, I would put it on the same shelf with, with those, except I kind of like the performance better because of that thinner blade. And uh, for the kind of stuff I was using it for, and, and I could see this going way more robust, this would be a great camp knife. Um, this, is, this is an awesome knife. So look for a close-up video this coming week. Uh, of this knife, and um, I, we'll get into it a little more, and I'll do some knife comparisons as usual. So, um, and then the uh, the sheath is very very tough. I do like this kind of uh, pocket style sheath. You just kind of drop it in. You can go about your business without snapping it in. It still stays snugly in the sheath, and you can uh, you can pull it when you need it. Uh, or if you're traveling or you know you're done using it, you just snap it up, and uh, it's good to go. So very much like this package um, and uh, look forward to a close up of this. Thirdly, uh, before we get into Knife Life news, I want to just show off quickly the knife we'll be giving away tomorrow night for the Gentleman Junkie giveaway. Gentleman Junkie is uh, our high tier on uh, Patreon. And um, this is the knife. This was donated to us by Dave of This Old Sword Blade Reviews. And it is a looker, but it's also a performer. This is the off-grid rapid fire coyote. Coyote referring to the color of the handle. Uh, this is cryogenically treated D2. It's got a hollow grind. And as you can see, this beautiful recurve blade, which by the way, people, recurves are not hard to sharpen despite uh, what you may have heard, unless you're using a very broad uh, flat stone. They're pretty easy to get sharp. Uh, doesn't matter. This is going to come to you quite sharp. And if you keep it stropped, it'll stay that way. It's got really nicely milled and pocketed G10 handle scales that really give you great grip. Awesome ergonomics. It reminds me a bit of the 300 series, uh, or the zero 200, uh, zero tolerance. It's got that sort of super robust build and uh, hand filling, uh, handle there. It's got a deep carry pocket clip. And uh, you, you got the screws nestled down in there, so it's not going to hassle your pocket. It fires like a ProTech. It is a uh, it's assisted, but uh, not but. It's assisted, and it fires. It's probably the strongest assisted knife I've ever experienced. Uh, these are manufactured by Best Tech, designed in California uh, by Kerry over there at Off Grid Knives, and uh, it's an awesome knife. So this is one of the benefits. Uh, from becoming a Patreon member. So check us out on Patreon for sure. Uh, actually, the quickest way to get there is to buy is by going to Patreon, uh, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Um, but so this is gonna be the Gentleman Junkie giveaway. And um, well, I'll just say it right now. If you wanna help support us, go to Patreon. You get knife stickers, you get a mention on the podcast, early access to the Sunday interview show and midweek supplementals, monthly knife giveaways such as this. Uh, and also um, we got some new and exciting exclusive opportunities uh, and uh, you'll always get to see the stuff first. Your support really helps us keep this ship moving and we really, really appreciate it. So check us out on Patreon and see what helping us can get you. That's my little pitch right there. What do you think? All right. Quickest way to do that is to go to the, the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon.
You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you've got questions or comments, call the 24-7 Knife Junkie listener line at 724-466-4487. So the only uh, little item today in Knife Life News, there I said it correctly, is... uh, (sighs) Oh, man. So this was uh, something I was looking at this morning, and I've been looking at it over the past week, and it's it's still open for pre-order. And I'm really, mm, it's tugging at my, it's tugging at my materialism. But anyway, it's it's the new custom knife factory. You know them. They're a Russian knife factory, a uh, knife company that takes and makes um, high fidelity versions of custom knives in uh, in a production format but that doesn't mean they're inexpensive and that's what's been tugging at my tugging at me today at well over the past week the new rotten designs uh well it's not new okay i'm gonna i'm gonna slow down it's got me that excited rotten design the evo we know this knife well they're coming out with the third iteration of it the first one had uh, all of the little um Look just like this, but a less acute point, and it had more finger grooves in the handle. And uh, then they went to the 2.0. They got rid of the finger grooves for one finger groove and then one large swale for the rest of your fingers. And they they made the tip a little more acute. I love the way that tip looks, by the way. And the whole package was smaller, a 3.6 inch blade as opposed to a 3.75 inch blade. Now they're moving back for the third uh round uh, the third evolution if you will of the evo and they're keeping the pointy tip and they're keeping the lack of multiple finger choils uh, and uh, but they're coming back to the original size that's what i'm trying to say 3.75 inch blade and a couple of new variations this one is the all blacked out version the one that really you know i saw it on their website and it's just ever so slightly less expensive like by 20 bucks, 30 bucks or something like that, which was starting to taste like a justification to me. Uh, and it has a, a large micarta inlay, another justification. You know, it's less expensive and it's got micarta. Maybe I should order it. The pre-open, uh, pre-order is still open. Uh, and uh, I, I think I have to, I think I have to back off of it because right now I happen to be in a um, sort of a customy fixed blade that I can carry every day uh, phase. And I'm, I'm not so sure that this knife fits into that, but man, I feel the future regret already setting in. Um, so check out the custom knife factory, Rotten Designs Evo 3.0. You just go to the, the custom knife factory. Actually, it's from Russia with Knives website. Pardon me while I pause for some delicious black coffee. And uh, you can pre-order them there. They have this blacked out version, as I mentioned. They have the uh, black, the black wash edition with the inlays, uh, my card inlays, and then they have one with beautiful damascene blade and um, moku mei or moku tai. You know, I, one of those fancy materials I don't have much of. Um, so if you're interested, you better jump on it uh, post haste because they've gone very quickly. Uh, the past two versions went very, very quickly and sell for ridiculous amounts on the secondary market. So, well, there you have it. Check it out. Uh, we're going to head on to uh, the state of the collection, take a look at a new knife I got, and then we're going to get real shallow and look at my 12 best looking um, folders. But before we do, um, I want you to remember that uh, we here at the Knife Junkie um well, we have our own um, we have our own merch. You definitely have to check out our merch. We have some beautiful T-shirts and logos that Jim has designed. We have we have uh, stuff with this logo on it, the the traditional knife junkie logo, the official logo. But Jim has also designed some really cool T-shirts and uh, and mugs, etc. Uh, with the "Don't take dull for an answer." Uh, tagline sort of uh, built into a really, really cool um, logo, as you can see there. You can get them in black or you can get them in white here. And then he also has uh, has come up with some other really cool ones, like a man without a knife is a man without a life. And of course, we know that that's just plain old truth. And uh, and also this, this is probably 
my favorite new one, the knife math. Two equals one, one equals none. That is just about as complex as my knife, uh, as my mathematics uh, understanding goes. So um, definitely go check out this stuff. Uh, wear it with pride, walk around. People be like, the knife junkie, what's that? And you can say, oh, well, if you don't know about the knife junkie, check it out here. And then you can say, just go to the knife and people will, will thank you. We'll thank you forever for, for introducing them to this and, and showing them the way. So obviously the best way to do that is to go to the knife slash shop. Remember it's the knife slash shop. The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. So you do remember recently on the Knife Junkie podcast, we interviewed a gentleman named John Miller of BGM Knives. And uh, he's a guy that um, uh, Instagram, of course, Instagram is my how I discover a lot of knife makers. Not that I discovered him. I do believe Bearded Gear maybe uh, pointed me in his direction. But this is a gentleman who makes a young guy, um, but still a gentleman, who makes a very, very edc fixed blades. And um, I fell in love with them instantly, especially one model in particular, though um, there are several others that I would like to get in the future because, you know, I'm acquisitive still at this age. I just want to keep getting more and more uh, knives. And um, so I think this may have been the first model he came out with, but it is. It's his Quaken. And before I draw it from the sheath, let me just tell you, uh, the sheath is awesome. And uh, bad sheaths really, uh, it's like bad audio in a movie. If the audio is good, you don't notice it. You're just in the movie and you're watching and it's all good. But if there's bad audio, you notice it and it ruins the whole experience. Well, that's kind of like sheaths on knives. If the sheath is bad, man, it could really throw you in a tailspin. Then you have to either hire someone to make you one or learn how to do Kydex uh, I, I learned how to do Kydex several years back for that very reason. And uh, he did a great job on this beautiful Kydex sheath. I put an Ulti clip that I had uh, that I forgot that I bought quite a while ago and never used. I found it in my, uh, in my, I have a big tackle box full of knife parts and put that on there. Works great. So sheath, excellent. Um, let's look at the handle. <laughs> the purple with that zombie green underneath cord wrap. As you know, recently I've been into the cord wrap handles and I saw he made this version um, for someone and posted it on Instagram. And I love purple and uh, the purple and green just really called out to me. So when I ordered this, I asked for purple and green and, uh, but he also does uh, cord wrapping of any color, but, but um He'll do G10, micarta, other other different kind of handle scales. But I wanted to keep it low profile, and I was just dying for some cord wrap. This is hardened with epoxy or something, and uh, so this is what I got. But check this out. This is his Quaken model. And when you order a knife from John at BGM Custom Knives, uh, you order the steel. He works in different high carbon, two different high carbon steels. And this one happens to be 3V. I figured why not, uh, you know, why not go all out? Of course, I don't need 3V. This is uh, going to probably be a bagel cutter, you know, at work or or a steak knife. Uh, so 3V isn't necessary, but who knows? Maybe it does become necessary at some point. And uh, you can also order whether you want it chisel ground or double beveled. You can also uh, choose hollow grind or flat grind. I chose a hollow grind, and I want to show you this. I don't know if this is going to come through, but it is so damn thin at the edge. It's unbelievable. It's like a straight razor. Wait, look at that. Can you see it like that? You can kind of see it when I put it uh, in, in cross-section like that. Uh, this young man, John Miller. I, okay, I'll stop calling him that. John Miller can really grind a knife. And uh, 
it comes down to a super thin, super sharp edge. It's like so sharp that it almost doesn't feel sharp until you put your fingers there and, uh, and brush your thumb across or swipe it through some paper. And the paper just kind of voluntarily falls to both sides, not wanting to get cut by such a thin edge. One thing I really love about this design, besides this gorgeous clip point profile, is the very generous um, sharpening uh, notch or sharpening choil you have there. First of all, uh, in, in the spirit of the upcoming topic of good looking, I really like the way that very large and prominent sharpening choil looks. But more than that, when you have it so thinly ground, hollow ground, so far down, I mean, it's thin behind the edge, it's thin here, it's thin, and, and then you can feel it halfway up the grind starting to widen into a wedge. Well, say you have this all, all your life and you use it all the time and you end up sharpening it and removing some metal, you can sharpen this blade nearly up to the top of that very generous choil. So this thing has legs over time for sure. So very impressive knife. Uh, it feels really good in hand. This, uh, this hardened um, cord wrap feels great in hand. And I've been carrying it um, edge out, edge forward uh, in the waistband on my right hip, as I do usually. And I've been drawing it like this and then, you know, turning it like this to use it because rarely do I find myself needing to use it like this. But having it in reverse grip, I don't know, leaves me with a warm feeling like uh, like I'm ready for anything. So please go to Instagram, check out BGM Knives on Instagram, John Miller, just killing it. And something else I like, uh, I asked him to leave the um, flats raw, not raw, but I didn't want him to, to finish the flats. I just wanted the beauty of the of the grind there and then come what may on the top. And I, you can see a little, I don't know what that is, a little stain or something, a little, little bit of uh, handmade beauty there. There's his maker's mark. Yeah, so check him out. He's got uh, several models, I think uh, eight models, and then he's done some customs. He'll do custom uh, designs as well. And um, I know that one of the custom knives in the past, sort of a worn, cliffy, defensive blade, has made it into his everyday, not everyday, it's made it into his roster of blades that he'll make for, for everyone. So check out John Miller, BGM Knives. Next, I wanted to give just a quick update. I know you've been wondering, Bob, how is your four inch cold steel Chris going? And uh, well, I, I figured I'd indulge you with an update. Finally, I can do this. So when this came, you may you might remember I had a number of criticisms. Uh, one of you know about the fit. It wasn't about the finish. It was about the fit and how you can just kind of feel and then you, it looks like those screws were a little bit too close to the edge of the plastic so they you know they they created a discoloration not really a, you can't feel that or anything it's not like a, a, a structurally unsound i just didn't like the way that looked and the uh detent was just so stiff i was like the only way i could open it was by grabbing this quillion with my thumb pushing really hard and then rotating it out well, this has been living on my desk. Look at that beautiful blade. This has been living on my desk ever since and, and it's been getting used that actually this forward hooking portion, uh, this forward of uh, hawkbill sort of portion of this crisp blade is extremely handy, really handy for cutting, uh, especially cutting things on this mat. Uh, uh, so it's been getting a bit of use, but also I've been fidgeting with it and just kind of absentmindedly opening it. Say I'm looking at something on the internet and you know, I'll just kind of open it. And in pretty short order, I have to say, the detent has gotten much better. I, I thought maybe I had to, you know, when you look down in there, the detent ball is quite prominent. And I thought maybe I'd have to go in there and sand it down or something. And then just being kind of lazy and not caring that much, I never did. But just through fidgeting with it, it has gotten to the point where I can actually use the thumb stud to pop it open. And it works great. I discovered that last night. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, baby, guess what? She's like, don't even. And I was like, oh, nothing, nothing, forget it. <laughs> so uh, the Chris, I know I dissed on it a little bit when I first got it and I still 
I, I still would like to maybe make different handles for it. And maybe that would be a project for me <laughs> when, when the rest of everything slows down. So in, in, in a few years or something, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't mind putting on some snake skin micarta on this some Python micarta. I think it'd look cool. It would be thematic. It would also feel, you know, better than the, than the grivery. But in the meantime, I'm going to keep keep this knife around because, like I've mentioned many times, that blade is just so, so well executed. And that's not an easy feat. And uh, not for nothing, it's pretty useful and it's pretty uh, menacing, too. So it works with the thumb stud now. Yay! I know you've all been wondering and uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll send my mailing address out so everyone can send me cards of congratulations. I know that's what you want to do. All right. So lastly, speaking of mail, I received in the mail yesterday uh, this. Oh, yeah. You've been wondering. You've been seeing 20 CV. Well, look at this. 20 CV and M4 and S35VN and XHP and SM100, the only knife steel I'm unfamiliar with here, and Vanex and 14C28N and 3V. This is called the If You Know, You Know t-shirt, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, Nick Rogers of Niche Designs, you know him from the Egress. This is the Egress uh, number two, second iteration. I'll put it under the knife cam so you can gaze upon its beauty as I talk about this t-shirt. Um, this is a new thing. He came on to Thursday Night Knives. Uh, Nick did uh, two weeks back, I believe, two or three weeks back, and uh, he showed off this t-shirt, and it is so cool. Uh, you know, you got, you got to be a knife nerd, a knife junkie to really appreciate it. Uh, and that's the beauty of it. The, if you know, you know, t-shirt. So, um, go over to Nick, Nick's website. It's niche designs.online. And, uh, you can also link there, I think through his, uh, niche underscore D S G N S on Instagram, Nick, uh, niche designs on Instagram, but pick up this t-shirt and uh, wear it around. And so people are like, what is that? Like my daughter today, I, mean, I was walking around with this and she's, she asked, what is that? And I was like, 20 CV and M4. And she's like, yeah, what is that? I was like, knife steals. She's like, oh, that's so cool. And you know why? Because it is out of the mouth of babes comes truth. And this is a very, very cool t-shirt. Um, I will show you one more time so you can gaze upon its coolness. I don't know. I just kind of feel cool walking around with it. It's 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 understated, and and I'm just waiting for someone to know. I'm going to be wearing this all summer long. Um, I'm not even going to wash it. I'm going to wear it all summer long, and uh, I'm going to see if anyone knows what it means. I'm sure there will be someone out there. Uh, actually, while I was at Blade Show, I met two people just randomly. One at the Attention to Detail Mercantile booth, and and I can't remember where the second person I met, but they were both from my county. And I was like, I thought I was the only one. But, you know, I live in a big county, so there's bound to be someone else uh, who, who nerds out about knives. So maybe I'll bump, bump into those people and they'll recognize me. Not me, but recognize the steels on my T-shirt. So, again, one last time, that's uh, niche designs for the If You Know, You Know T-shirt with all these cool blade steels. Anyone know what SM100 is? Am I just uh, late to that party? I usually am. Uh, Nick Rogers, stand-up guy, designing really cool stuff. Look forward to what he has coming up next. For us, coming up next is the top 12 best-looking modern folders in my collection. So I, I was um, thinking for the first part of this week about what the main topic was going to be. And it the main topic I first thought of, I'm going to delay because I have something else to add to it. It just has to arrive first. And then and then the collection will be finished. This is funny. This is something my brother used to do with firearms. He'd be like, Bob, I think, I think my collection is done. And I'd say something like, well, you don't have a polymer handle nine millimeter. And he'd be like, oh. And then he'd go off and, and he would take care of that glaring gaping hole in his collection he he has toned things down since uh, in his old old age Vic just kidding uh, but uh, so in my collection it is not done but I do have some beauties all right so that's my long way around let me start 
there are 12 of them, and I'll try and keep this brief, Jim. All right, here we go. First one is the Riot K2. Look at this beauty. All right, I love the handle. I love the bronze titanium contoured handle with the, the you know, sort of evocative of a dragon's back. And then you've got these uh, sort of dimpled looking like 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 Hephaestus himself hammered these these uh, handle scales. Um, of course, they didn't. They came out of a CNC or a wire EDM in, in China and not uh, an underground forge on Mount Olympus. However, the, the real thing here is this. This is the, the best looking Tanto blade in my collection. The, the runner up is going to be down downstream a little bit. Um, actually, I have three Tantos that I just find incredibly beautiful, but this one to me is the best. I love the slight upsweep of the blade. I love the swedge, but it stops at the perfect spot so you can put your thumb on the back of the blade. I hate a swedge that comes all the way to the end uh, because then you're just putting your thumb on real thin steel. And then, of course, I just love Riot's grinder satin. It's gorgeous. And those grind lines just beautiful. Very, very thinly hollow ground here. And then with the sort of stout forward uh, flat grind there. I'm going to turn that down just a notch because there's going to be a lot of reflection. All right. So that's the first one, the Riot K2. Uh, if you go to Knife Joker, they have gone to town making exclusives on this knife. So you can still find this knife. Uh, okay. You know what? I haven't gone to Knife Joker in a while, and someone lambasted me in the comments. You need to do better research. I went to the, I went to the Knife Joker, and they didn't have them, you know, in the model that I wanted. So I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But, but this knife can be found. It can be had, and it is all of that and a bag of chips, as we used to say in the '90s. Okay, next is a Boker, and I don't say that often, but this is an incredible Boker, and I love it. And uh, primarily, it's because it's designed by one of my favorite knife makers out there, Charles Marlowe. I don't talk about him frequently. I've never hefted a real Marlowe. And uh, he's kind of an elusive beast, uh, just making incredibly, incredibly beautiful and exclusive uh, sort of prestige pieces. This is the Squail. And it's an interesting combination of high end and middle end. It's got a VG10 blade, right? Which I don't care about. I just... I, Steel-wise, I don't care that it's VG10. I just love how it looks. But uh, it's got a titanium bolster and liners and G10 here. The original version, and you can still get this, was with green micarta, which was, as you know, my preferred model. But it only came tapped for tip down, which was just a, a misstep. Now, I think they've uh, rectified that in recent days. I think you can get this with the green micarta tapped for tip up or tip down, doesn't matter. I just I just think this thing is so incredible looking. Uh, this is one of two knives uh, that you'll see here today and one of three knives in my collection altogether that for some reason reminds me of an Italian racing boat. I don't know if, if you remember the Donzi or if you know what a Donzi boat is. It looks kind of like a cigarette boat, but it's, I don't know. It's just got that Italian flair, that beautiful style. To me, that's what this is. It's got that, but it also has the length that I really love. It's a nearly four inch blade and I love the recurve and this sort of swooping drop point. Love this knife and it is a thing of beauty. Very, very thinly hollow ground also. You'll find that that's a, a recurring theme in this list and uh, it doesn't get carried enough. I need to, I need to carry this more. Because when I do, I'm like, why don't I carry this more? I remember once wiping it, uh, wiping the fingerprints off. It's a it's pretty nice satin blade on a pair of jeans, a brand new pair of jeans. And just the tip just glanced the jeans at the wrong angle. And I cut it, cut right through. And I was like, damn it. Now they're work jeans. They, you know, a moment ago they were quote unquote dress up jeans. And now they're, now they're work jeans. Next is probably the best looking Emerson, I think, and one of the best looking folding um, Bowies out there. And that's the CQC 13. This one, of course, dressed up with uh, micarta handle scales by Knives and Such. That's Tom Engelson. Knives underscore N, that's an N, underscore Such 
on uh, Instagram. He makes incredible scales for ZTs, and, or uh, I'm sorry, ZTs, for um, Emerson's and Les George knives and, and some others. Um, but uh, he really he really knocks it out of the park with these Emerson scales. I my Elvia is also wearing his scales. Check him out for sure. Met him at Blacho, great guy. But the real star of the show here again is the blade. It is such a perfect iteration of the Bowie of the clip point blade. I love the um, swoop here. On that some some clips are straight and that's nice, but this clip is nicely swooped and I love that. And um, yeah, I love this one. I, I, I do wish I bought this in a panic when for some reason I thought I would never be, be able to get a CQC 13 and I got it with the, with the serrations. Cause that's all that was available at the time. I knew I wanted satin because I love how the Emerson blades look in satin, but you can see the, um, well, it's satin on the bevels and stone washed on the flats. But I love how you can see the grind lines, and it's just crisp and nice. So I knew I wanted that. I did not want the serrations, but I've I've grown to love them. You know, it's kind of like an arranged marriage. I've I've grown to love the the serrations on this. But if we're talking looks, and that's what we're doing right now, I like the way it looks with the uninterrupted edge. Just. That's what I like. Uh, the handle on this is as comfortable as it is good looking. And that's the same handle you'll find on the um, on the uh, uh, other one <laughs> I just got recently. Well, a little, little uh, senior brain lock there. What is it? Uh, I'll remember it downstream and I'll just, it'll just come, it'll just come blurting out when I'm talking about something else. So I love the handle, great handle, but that blade really just does it for me. CQC 13 by Emerson. Putting that down next to the beautiful Squale. The next one is brand new. Got this one at Blade Show. I've always admired its looks. And then once I got it in hand, it really cemented how I feel about this uh, design. And that is the Vero Engineering Synapse. I find it to be a really beautiful blade and and you know not too many drop points in this list here if to me the drop point is inherently the most pedestrian probably most useful but the most pedestrian and boring um in general blade design and i think that's why you'll you'll hear a lot of blades being um referred to as uh, modified drop points. It's like when you don't know what to call it, it's like a irritable bowel syndrome. It's like your stomach hurts. We don't know what the problem is. So we're just going to call it irritable bowel syndrome. Well, it's sort of the same thing with this. It's, um, it's, it's a, you know, with, with most drop points, this one, however, with that beautiful swedge and those, that gorgeous high height, nearly fully flat ground blade is just, ah, it's just a knockout, especially when you look at it next to uh, this titanium here. You got the beautiful shiny steel next to that sort of, uh, um, what do you call that? I don't know, dull titanium. Dull sounds pejorative, and I don't mean it that way, but uh, the, the contrast between the finishes, that shiny, glossy finish next to this sort of matte, I'll call it matte and subdued finish. And then the handle. You know, generally, I, I tend not to like uh, swales that, that accommodate more than one finger because of comfort. But in this case, it is very comfortable. I mean, you can hold it back here, and uh, it's quite comfortable like that. I like to hold it right there with my finger right next to the blade. And uh, you've got that really nice jimping. But also, I love the way it looks on the bolster lock side. I don't have too many bolster locks. And something about the look of this, um, the way you don't see the cutout all the way back, the way it's covered with this gorgeous tan canvas micarta, and uh, this little this little uh, puzzle piece here, just very fetching. Also, on the blade, Joseph designed in that little notch, specifically for those of us who like to do the spidey flick. So obviously designed by a knife nerd himself. And uh, yeah, just a great, great looking blade. I would love, uh, all of his knives are pretty, 
pretty damn good looking, I got to say. And uh, I wouldn't mind getting something, one of the larger ones. And then I took a look at Blade Show at the at the integral model. And I'm sorry, I forget what it's called right now. And that one, whoa, oh my goodness. I mean, it's beautiful from every aspect. You turn it and you see the 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 plain run of uninterrupted titanium on the back and it's just crazy also the one the one little hit on this knife is is that in certain hand positions this pocket clip could be a bit of a hot spot he's remedied that by angling the the final bit of it down on some of the newer models but i love the way the pocket clip looks and their logo the v logo is pretty damn sweet so this is the smallest knife you'll see in this uh in this lineup here speaking of drop points <laughs> which i rarely do here's one but a very very classy looking one this is the zero tolerance zero four five two cf um a sinkovich design i love everything sinkovich designs uh, some of them tend towards the bulbous some of them are long and sleek like this this is my favorite. Um, this has come out in a number of different versions through Zero Tolerance. The 045, 0450 is the smaller version. And then uh, it, it had a couple of sprint runs with more exotic materials and builds. Uh, to me, this is just totally elegant and totally beautiful. And really a big difference was made by by putting on a, a new clip, an aftermarket clip. I did not like the clip it shipped with. It looked like they pulled it off a, a Kershaw. And then once I did that, cleaned up the look a little bit. This is still a perfect knife to me. It's got great action, but really we're talking about looks. And this is just a sleek, um, athletic looking, this is like a Mako shark, okay? Great white sharks are awesome, you know. Uh, they're like big tanks swimming through the water. Mako sharks are the quickest thing in the water and, you know, arguably as deadly, right? But just sleek like a bullet. And to me, this has that, that sort of effect. Plus, you have beautiful grinder satin on this, uh, on this blade. Look at that. Mm-mm-mm. And uh, I do tolerate the regular weave carbon fiber. You know me, I'm not a huge fan of uh, regular weave carbon fiber. It'd be really cool if this were some exotic carbon fiber, like marbled or, I don't know, something else. But, uh, oh boy, first world problems, huh? So the 0452 CF by Zero Tolerance and, and Sinkovich. Love it. Next is by another guy whose knives I love. Mostly he's known for fixed blades and mostly he's known for these incredible kukris. And that's Jason Knight, who I had the pleasure of meeting at Blade Show and the pleasure of interviewing right here on this show. And this is his MK Ultra. Original, the original run was a uh, uh, collaboration with Doug Markaita. And I'm not sure if that was just to get him introduced into the folding knife game or if Doug Markaita had anything to do with the design, but I look at this and the design is all Jason Knight. You've got the beautiful Kukri blade and then this uh, signature sort of massive fuller running down the um, running down the center of it, which incidentally you can use to spidey flick it open. But also the handle, this, okay, I've seen a number of folding Kukris. I own a number of folding Kukris. This by far is the best looking and the most ergonomically yummy. I mean, it just fits in hand like, like it should, like it should. And a lot of that has to do with this, this continual arch over the back or arc. And then the shape of that handle, it just fits perfectly in hand. But more importantly, it looks good. Look at that handle. It looks like some of his, uh, some of his uh, forged, Kukri's and man, are they beautiful. Uh, while I was at Blade Show, I had a chance to, to hold some of them and uh, I don't know. It, it's one of those experiences. I think it's, I think you would categorize it as sublime. It's not quite beautiful. Uh, it is beautiful, but it's also beautiful plus. Beautiful plus the in danger inherent in nature. Uh, I guess you might, you might say something like that. 
So the elements, so this knife was produced by Fox Knives Italy. It's an N690CO, which you can get in, just ridiculously sharp. This one came very sharp and I've stropped it into an absolute razor blade. Uh, titanium on this side, just beautifully executed. I love the the um, micarta that Fox uses also. Um, so just a thing of beauty. This was, at, at the time this was made, it was an exclusive to tactical elements. Now it's kind of out there, I think on a broader level. Oh, and by the way, 4.25 inch blade. Can't beat that. All right, next, a classic. A classic that you might say goes back hundreds of years. This iteration, not hundreds of years. This is the Cold Steel Large Espada, all dressed up in shiny materials. <sighs> love this knife. So what do I love about this knife? Well, it's based on the Spanish Navaja, the large folding knife with the ratcheted lock that uh, this one does not have a ratcheted lock. This has the triad, but it was the large folding knife that Spaniards developed um, when I think in the Sevilla, near Seville, Se Sevilla, I'm not, I'm not sure, uh, region when swords were outlawed. They couldn't, not everyone could just carry a sword anymore. I think you had to be nobility because too many people were getting in duels for their honor and fighting and killing each other on the streets and such, uh, which is understandable, uh, not that they would outlaw a weapon, but it's understandable, you know, people getting in getting in duels for their honor. And uh, so they had to switch from swords to folders, and they made these giant folders uh, with sort of clip point blades, not sort of, clip point blades that uh, mostly, that they could fold and fit into their cummerbunds or into their waistbands or just kind of stash on their person. Uh, but if they needed to fight someone to defend their honor, they'd have this very large knife at their, at their, um, at the ready. This cold steel version, when they first came out with this, I, I thought, oh my gosh, like they could just stop making knives now, man, just stop making knives. They've made a folding Navaja in modern materials. And, um, the original ones were hollow ground. I have one of the original ones, uh, in G10 and they were hollow ground. The newer ones like this are, um, very sharp, but not hollow ground. They are um, flat ground. Not for nothing, I do think that the hollow grind lends to the look even more. I love the way a hollow grind knife looks. Uh, this is not one of those, um, but in terms of performance, doesn't need to be. This is an S35 VN steel and aluminum bolsters, and then this beautiful polished black G10. Just a beautiful knife. And uh, no matter how hard I try, I, I have not been able to stop the wear and tear on that aluminum. So I'm just gonna let it go to town and some at some point it'll be brushed aluminum. Five and a half inch blade, that's the largest one in this, uh, in this lineup. But that is the Cold Steel Large Espada. And the XL, which I ha also have, is probably even more beautiful. And then the, sh the very small one, Mm, I think they missed the mark with it. Uh, it doesn't feel right in my hand anyway. It feels like it's going to come out of my hand. But the large and the XL, man, did they nail it. Next is probably my favorite Warren Cliff in my, in my uh, collection, and that is the Hinderer XM24 Warren Cliff. I have the XM18 Warren Cliff, and I love that too. But the full four inch blade of the 24 really allows the full expression of the hinderer design of the Warren cliff. There's nothing about it that looks truncated or stubby, and it is just a graceful, beautiful looking blade. Look at that, even with the choil, and I, I dare say, especially with the large choil, with the finger choil. I have the XM18 DLT exclusive uh, Warren cliff with the you know non-choil version. It's got just a sharpening choil, and, and actually something about it looks a little off. I mean, just very little. I still love it. But something about this finger choil on this blade just perfects it, I think. So I, I don't know how to describe it. It's just something you got to see with your eyes. And maybe you agree, maybe you disagree. But the XM24 Warncliffe is one of my best looking knives. 
I know. I know you're all jealous. And it's got on this side, it's got the battle worn finish. And uh, the blade itself is the battle worn finish. This is pre triway pivot. And man, does it move. This is a great, this is the best uh, non triway flipper from Hinderer that I've ever experienced. And I think some of that has to do with a very dialed in detent. But the other uh, has to do with the weight and size of the blade. This I cannot slow roll out without without an assist from the flipper. XM18 Warncliffe. Mm -mm -mm. Oh boy, I'm going to have to start stacking them. These are big knives. So next is another one of those knives that I say reminds me of an Italian racing boat. It reminds me of a Donzi race boat or Italian sport boat. I don't know what the hell they call them. Leisure boat. And that is an, a, the attention to detail mercantile model one. This one in particular with the natural uh, micarta inlay. That reminds me kind of of teak wood and, uh, you know, that you see on boats. And this has a really thinly ground, hollow ground blade. Very, very sharp handmade. This was one of uh, Douglas Esposito's first folders. I mean, like this particular specimen was in his first batch. He's now uh, uh, on bearings and he's done so many other different kinds of handles. He does a lot of really cool handle materials and um, uh, not handle materials, but handle uh, treatments like jigging, like old school jigging. It looks so nice. He does all these beautiful inlays of different kinds of shields. So they look new. You know, they're in the new format of frame lock folder, flame, frame lock flipping folder. But with the jigging and with uh, the inlays and stuff, they're evocative of older kind of knives. And I just think this is uh, just a beautiful, beautiful knife with a with a with a really nice profile. To me, it's like a refined. It's as if um, I mean, I'm not going to compare this to a Strider in looks, but it has some of the same spirit. But I think it's a more refined design. And sorry, all you Strider guys, uh, but I think it's true. I think this is a, a more refined design. And even the even the lock side is beautiful on this knife. Just really nice. And now I saw recently on Instagram, he's starting to make, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, milled titanium clips. This is a folded titanium clip. Does the job just fine and actually looks pretty cool. I like spring clips a lot, but uh, but the, the uh, milled titanium clip is really nice. So hope to get my hands on another one of these one day. Uh, at Blade Show, there were a bunch of them, and I just kept going back and playing with them. But I was there for other things, you know, things that I didn't have already. So, but at some point, I'd like to, I'd like to bulk up my attention to detail mercantile collection. Three more to go. I'll keep it quick. This one, the beauty of symmetry. This is an arcane design antimatter folding dagger. I can think of three folding daggers, true daggers with double edges. Uh, one is the is the uh, hinderer Maximus, I think it's called, and then the other is the um, sharp by design um, arch nemesis. Sorry, the names are just are just getting to me. This is the antimatter, and what a what a thing of beauty! This is produced by Riot, and uh, design wise, it's a um, collaboration. Uh, between Arcane Designs, that's Israel Bacchus, and um, and uh, Something Obscene Company. Look at that. So I opted for this. This comes in um, Damascus, comes in a black version, and then in this bronze with, or, or black and bronze with uh, satin. I went for the satin because I love Riyadh's belt satin, grinder satin, and look at that blade. Just absolutely beautiful. Everything about this is symmetrical, especially from this side. It's not on the lock side because the lock has to be on one one side of it. But when you look at it here, it's totally symmetrical. Feels really good in hand in both grips or in, in the two main grips, reverse and, uh, and standard grip. It's got great action. You just have to be careful when you close it that you don't put your hand on the back side. But look at that. Even when it's closed, it's beautiful. And not for nothing, you can grab it here and as you remove it from your pocket and wave it out. 
mm, mm, the symmetry of this just knocks me out. All right, I'm going to do this gently. Lay this across, say right there. So you have the antimatter. Second to last knife is second to second to most beautiful Tanto in my collection. I think this is your this is your standard, but older. Microtech SOCOM Elite. This is from 2012, and I, I don't know exactly when they changed the Tanto design from this, but to me, this is probably, well, this is one of the most beautiful folding Tanto designs out there. I love the swedge. I love the, the drop point there, the sort of clip point that it has right there, and uh, just something about this knife, even with the carbon fiber on it, is just, just beautiful. Just a good-looking knife. I like how it tapers down towards the tail end. This is my my official road trip knife. So whenever I get in the car to drive more than an hour or so, this is in my pocket. It's because of the glass breaker. That's how it started because this was my first knife with a glass breaker. But the tradition is just carried on. If I, if I go on a road trip, this is what I'm carrying. Might have something else to play with, you know, sitting in the console of the car, but Look at this. And one thing about this is it's astounding blade to handle ratio, which is part of what I find beautiful about any knife um, is it looks like it's a one to one. I'm not sure if it is. Well, it's not. It can't be, but it looks like it is. And then also you have this great thumb ramp and then reverse thumb ramp. Love the way it looks. Love the way it feels. And uh, this is just a great knife. One of the few knives out there where I can excuse the tip down only setup. And last but certainly not least is one of my favorite knife designs, folding designs of all time. And that comes by uh, our good friend, Mr. Les George. And this is the VSEP. The Les George VSEP. So this is, this is the mid-tech version, one of the first mid-tech knives out there. Maybe the knife that the term mid-tech was coined for. Um, you ask Les George, he'll say no, but uh, this is the knife I remember first hearing the term mid-tech, uh, where, where some of the parts are cut out, you know, water jetted and, and such, and, the, and maybe beveled elsewhere. And then they show up to his shop and he sharpens it, puts it together. And, and, uh, you know, so now that's a very, very common practice, but when the VSEP first came out, it was not. VSEP, I do not remember what it stands for. It's a, some sort of ordinance, uh, some sort of bomb, but I can't remember exactly what it is. Les George, before he became a knife maker, was a Marine Corps, um, uh, what is it, OED, Ordnance Disposal, o O D E Ordnance Disposal Technician, ODT. I don't know exactly what it is, but he was one of those guys who defuses bombs and, and, uh, and so started making knives for that purpose, for digging around, looking for IEDs. And then his designs got more and more refined. And uh, this, the VSEP and the, uh, con and then since then the ProTec Rockeye and the SBR are all based on his Rockeye design, which is uh, a, um, a custom knife. To me, this iteration with black and, uh, and the, the brushed, not brushed, but this uh, nicely, uh, done titanium is just the best. I mean, it is one of the best looking knives out there. And um, you look at close at the details around the cutout, how it's chamfered here. It's it's good looking and it feels great. So, so that's it. That's it. I've gone on long enough, but this is probably, I don't know, right now in this mood that I'm in, this is probably the best looking knife here. I love the Les George VSEP slash Rockeye. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, my 12 best looking modern folders. What do you think? What do you think is the best looking modern folder here? And then what do you think is the best looking modern folder period? Um, this could be something in your, in your um, collection or just something that you've appreciated from from out in the world. To me, the uh, the sharp by design uh, arch nemesis, which I mentioned when I was talking about this folding dagger, the the antimatter is is one of the best looking. One of the best looking. I don't own that. It would be on the table if I did. But here you go. Let me know what you think. Also, just let me know what you think in general. 
Uh, we put this podcast out twice a week. We have the midweek supplemental, which is what you're watching right now. And then every Sunday, we have the interview show. Thursday night, uh, which you'll see tomorrow night when we give away this uh, rapid fire by Off Grid Knives. Thursday night, every week, except for the occasion when I'm too tired because I've just gone down to Blade Show, we do our live show, Thursday Night Knives, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a great and lively show, lots of people commenting, and then we have people jumping in too. You have a cell phone? I know you do. You have an iPad? Perhaps. You got a laptop computer? You can join us. All you do is go to the knifejunkie.com slash join, sign your name in as you want, as you want it to appear on screen, and boom, you're on screen, you're talking with me, you're talking with whoever else is is on the show and we talk knives. I'll, I'll pick a topic, whatever, we'll just go off and we have a, a wonderful time. Lots of good people show up to that show. Uh, why don't you be one of those good people as well? So if you like what we've done here, please comment, uh, subscribe, hit the notification bell, do all of those things and share the video, copy the link, send it to a friend. You never know who might be a knife junkie out there. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.